Um, so what can we do now? So what was the question asking us for? It was asking us for delta x and this. Well, it should be pretty clear now how to find delta x. Yeah, so we can just do um, the equation over uh, delta x equals the initial t times one half plus one half. There's an even simpler approach. I think one thing that's uh, hindering us here is uh, maybe you're not focusing enough on our setup here. This is our setup that we use to, uh, to kind of guide ourselves to the problem. So according to this setup, what's the easiest way to figure out what delta x is now? Look for the one that's missing the x. Even simpler than that. Well, what, what, do, what, is the, what, what do we have, what, what, does, what we have on the blackboard tell us about delta x? What have we figured out about delta when x? We're t. That's right. But we know what t is. So delta x is, 21 times 16.8. There you go. Okay. Yeah, 21 times 16.8. So let's calculate that. for this? Meters. Meters. Right? And I'll just mention that came out positive, which makes sense. Okay, well, let, let me remind you of the, this uh, approach here. Notice that it would have been very easy to waste a lot of time looking for difficult ways to find delta x when well, we can just do 21 times t. So the approach is you really want to use this notation as your, your setup for thinking about the problem. And the reason that we could use delta x there, because that delta x is for the motorist, but because we already established that the delta x is the same for the motorist yes. and the police car, that's why we could use it. That's right. That's right. So this delta x really is for both the motorist and the police car. If they, if they hadn't been for both of them, we would have had to put a little m here and a little p here. Right. So the and subscripts are really crucial. Yeah. Okay, now I see. Okay. That's what I meant earlier when I said we have to use the same variable for things that are the same and different variables for things that are different. Well, we know that the delta x is the same for both of these, so we use the same variable. On the other hand, we knew that their velocities were different, so we use different variables for the velocities, vm here and vp here. Different variables for things that are different, same variable for things that are the same. And how do you know if they're the same or the different? Just by thinking very hard about it. It's not easy. Okay, so now we know this delta x by using our overall setup, and now we have to find this. Um, now, we have now four numbers. When you have four numbers, you can use pretty much any equation you feel like. Right. So maybe the easiest one? Yeah, I would agree with that. The one on top? Yeah. So, uh, so the final velocity equals the initial velocity plus acceleration times t. Mathematically, does that come out positive or negative? Positive. Is that what we would have expected? Yeah. Yeah, we know we're moving in the positive direction. Let's see if the book got that. Oh, they decided to do this in kilometers per hour, but uh, I'll just check that we got that right. So, let's see. So that's. Okay, so we had two answers. Here was our delta x, and here was our v final. Okay. So that's it. Right. Okay. Well, those are hard. Um, so for for one object problems, I was encouraging you just to pretty much stick to the five step method. But you can see for more complicated two object problems, you got to use some creativity. Uh, and it takes some practice to move through those. We still followed a lot of the steps from the handout, but there were some steps that did not fully apply, and you gotta use some judgment and creativity to get through that. 
The key things, though, are, first of all, we needed to be, have ultra-clear pictures in our mind, what was happening. It's pointless to even try the problem without these clear pictures. Here we needed three different pictures to really think about what was going on. Um, we need two separate sets of work, one for the motorist and one for the police car. We have to treat the two objects separately, so that's important. And then the real key here, and you'll use this for multiple object problems throughout the course, if you have a multiple object problem for every single variable, you have to ask if it needs a subscript or not. That's really the key to solving the problem, and that's often not obvious. You've got to stop and think about whether it needs a subscript. The delta x here did not need a subscript, but the velocities did. And it's a good thing that we went over how to do zero acceleration problems, because that, that's what we needed here. That's pretty common on multiple object problems. So we saw there's a different approach for a zero acceleration object and a non-zero acceleration. And again, the, the one thing that oftentimes students don't do that's really helpful is to actually physically write down these five variables and keep writing down everything you know and what the questions are and keep coming back to this list over and over through the problem as you figure out more and more things. Because this is, this is a kind of our roadmap to getting through the problem as we go. Uh, we had to use the trick of substituting this delta x down here. And then we had to use some judgment as for an equation that um, then we needed as an equation that would help to, 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 to work things out. And then we did a math trick to avoid using the quadratic formula. So there was a lot of work there. Hopefully you'll try that problem again and yeah. uh, see how it goes. On the other hand, like I said though, before you really practice a lot of multiple object problems, you should practice a lot of single object problems. Um, um, these actually sometimes come up on exams, but sometimes they don't. Um, you're almost sure to see single object problems. So you have to, sh be, no you have to be sure you can do the single object problems, and these um, is, not, is not as high a priority. I, I would practice those, but anyway, it's pointless to try the, the multiple objects until you're really comfortable with the single objects. That's what you would start with, okay? These videos are offered on a pay what you like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks.